Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I will be discussing ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's disease. I will explain what each illness is, assessment findings, and nursing interventions. My name is Christina, nurse practitioner. Let's get started. Beginning with ulcerative colitis, this disease causes inflammation as colitis ends in itis, I-T-I-S, meaning inflammation within the mucosa layer. Here is a quick review of the large intestine, which includes the sigmoid, descending, transverse, and ascending colon. With ulcerative colitis, it can lead to bleeding and cause ulcers that can develop scar tissue, which will decrease the absorption of nutrients. Unfortunately, this is an ongoing condition that has remissions followed with exacerbations. The link is associated with a family history, being Caucasian, dietary, and immunological features all play a role in ulcerative colitis. This disease typically affects people between the ages of 20 and 40 years of age. So what are some assessment findings? The mucosa layer plays a huge role in how this disease evolves. Ulcerative colitis is categorized into acute versus chronic. Acute would cause bleeding and inflammation as shown here. Chronic ulcerative colitis can develop scar tissue and change the anatomy of passive bowel movements, causing pain as depicted here in the cross section of the photo. So some common symptoms would include abdominal pain and tenderness, which could cause diarrhea filled with blood and mucus in the stool from the destruction of the mucosa layer. Because of blood loss as a common feature, most patients that come in in the chronic stage of ulcerative colitis are likely to have anemia. Vitamin K deficiency is also common, which may cause a patient to bleed. Typically, your patient is going to feel fatigued have a skinny appearance frame with malnutrition and dehydration. Malnutrition from the loss of mucosa surface because it can't absorb the essential needs for the body to function. Take a look at this image shown here. With ulcerative colitis, different segments of the colon can be affected. As depicted here, what I want to highlight is a severe form of ulcerative colitis referred to as pancolitis that would consist of 10 to 20 bowel movements per day that is bloody and your patient may have a sense of urgency with cramping pain followed with fever and an elevated heart rate. In severe cases, this could potentiate shock from blood loss and dehydration. So some nursing interventions to help your patient is based on the severity and how much of the mucosa is affected. Medications would include for your mild to moderate symptoms would be mesalamine or topical corticosteroids with antidiarrheal medications. For chronic ulcerative colitis, immunosuppressive meds such as tacrolimus paired with an antibiotic and probiotics to help build the good bacteria within the intestinal flora. An interesting fact, a doctor shared with me that nicotine can help protect patients with ulcerative colitis. So more reason to educate on quitting, especially if your patient smokes. So in the acute phase, keep your patient NPO, nothing by mouth, provide fluids intravenously, allow for gut rest and monitor for bowel sounds or potential bowel perforation that would include changes with abdominal pain or increased tenderness, monitor stool that would include blood and mucus. Emphasize and educate your patient on food choices. Once they transition from clears, consider a low fiber diet and encourage a diet high in protein that will include iron supplements. Avoid foods that cause gas such as grains, veggies, um, fruits, dairy products, coffee, and alcohol. Now, let me paint the picture for you. Patients not any better, what's next? surgery indeed. I want to go over some very important elements with you that is a hot topic for NCLEX and nursing exams and a must know for bedside care. There are two options that are decided upon your medical team. One is temporary that your patient may have for two to three months, referred to as proctocolectomy, with an ileal pouch and an anastomosis referred to as an IPAA. Yes, a mouthful. This is done by laparoscopic 
laparoscopic approach. It occurs in two stages. The first surgery, the colon and the rectum are removed and a J pouch is created at the end of the small intestine and joined at the top of the anal canal and a temporary ileostomy that collects waste into a collection bag referred to as a J pouch. Eight to 12 weeks later, an ileostomy is closed and two ends of the bowels are reattached. Wastes are now able to pass through the small intestine through the anus. However, a permanent approach would include a total proctocolectomy with permanent ileostomy from the distal end of the ileum that removes all of the colon that includes colon, rectum, and anus. So some of those highlights for the RN, body image for patients may be affected as a patient may have a difficult time. So having them connect with a group that other individuals may be going through to help share these experiences is very important. Educating your patient or caregiver that will be doing dressing changes and showing them how to empty the bag and reapply a new bag is crucial and important to start sooner than later. In addition, stoma care. The RN shall monitor the stoma you always want to see a beefy red stoma that is vascular appearing. A stoma that is pale in color, purplish, needs to be addressed immediately. It may indicate a decreased circulation. Always empty your pouch when one third of the bag is full and the stoma care is always essential. Take a look at the photo here. The patient's stool will be modified based on where the ileostomy was placed. For example, the descending colon, the stool will be more formed as opposed to the ascending colon, it will be more liquid appearing stool. So moving on to Crohn's disease, this is an inflammatory disorder that is different from ulcerative colitis because it affects any location of the GI tract from mouth to anus. Now, what seems to help nursing students understand the difference between these two is differences. So Crohn's is different in the fact that it can occur at any age between 10 and 30. It affects any part of the GI tract from mouth to anus. Inflammation is from the entire intestinal wall. Bowel obstruction is possible. Bloody stools is less common with fatty stools called Steteria. Some of those assessment findings include weight loss, dehydration, bloating of the abdomen. Your patient may have tenderness on the right lower quadrant. If inflammation of the ileum fever cramping after meals are consumed creates a colicky discomfort with diarrhea followed with nausea and or vomiting. Malabsorption and vitamin D and vitamin B12 and folic acid. So some nursing interventions are the same as mentioned for ulcerative colitis. However, surgery is is a last resort because of reoccurrence and complications of short bowel syndrome. Again, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for upcoming notifications.